from the vault. High atop the pastoral center of the Diocese of Camden, you're listening to Talking Catholic. Hey guys, you're listening to Talking Catholic, the official podcast of the Catholic community of South Jersey. Welcome, I'm Pete Sanchez, and with me is Mike Walsh. Mike, how are you on this fine day? Oh man, it is a spring day outside. I hear it's, I haven't seen it, but I hear it's going up to 67 degrees, so I'm thrilled here in uh, early March. That is exciting. We are warming up, and it's uh, it's good. I feel, I don't want to jinx anything, I do feel like we're... <coughs> Hopefully, out of the snow business now. Do you think least. you're? Do you think by saying that it's going to go some other way? Are you some sort of weird Punxsutawney filled with some crazy amount of <laughs> power over weather and climate? Are you saying I look like a groundhog? Hmm. I'm not saying you don't. I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, the um, I uh, I, I think uh, I, I'm. I always try to hedge my bets. I guess it's kind of like the casino. I never want to bet put on the it. weather. Well, with the weather, I mean, I don't want to say anything and then have it be. I, I never I, knew I'm that you a little had this superstition. I, I didn't realize you had this godlike quality about you that you thought by saying something it might alter reality. Oh, you've never seen that radiant glow from a hundred something episodes that we've done, Mike? Nope. Really, you can't see the halo up here. Nope. Oh gosh, well I must be mistaken then. <laughs> yep. See, um, speaking of radiance, let's talk for a bit about Captain Marvel. That oh, you mean how was... you uh, um, were nonplussed by it? How you had no positive feelings about <laughs> it? That's never... what you told me before the podcast started? I never you said that. Misogynist. I never said the words nonplussed or misogynist. <laughs> it was all coming out of your mouth. No, I um, sure. I did sure. think it was a pleasant pleasant viewing experience. That is not how you described it to me. Uh, Say it how you described it to me the first time. I don't remember. Because it, 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 well, it, it, it was a, you got a visceral, visceral response from me. I said I thought it was pretty good. I, I, must have used I think the, words. the actual phrase you said was not bad, not which bad. is not well, the glowing endorsement it deserves as a top five Marvel movie see, of all time. I thought, it, you know, Marvel, I think, follows a formula which works, and it's good in that. That's what I meant, but I thought Brie Larson was good. I thought Samuel Jackson was good. The cat or... Wait, how could you say it, it followed a formula? It actually, it didn't follow any of the formulas of any of the preceding... Show, well, movies. I, I definitely felt like there was something to it. It, it felt it. Um, it was a little bit, you know. It felt it's like the hero finding themselves. It mm-hmm. felt like you know. It reminded me of kind of almost a little Thor quality because in the first Thor, the uh, where he was a whiny pain in the butt who got thrown out of Asgard was, by his father. But then That's he's not even fish, close to what he's happened. A in fish Captain out of water. Like Captain Marvel was, you know, I mean, basically, it's the classic mythological hero's journey. Except she was already a hero. She was from the very beginning. Matter of fact, it was she even claims to be a hero in the. Uh, but then in the trailers, as a matter of fact, she is okay. Well, then I guess well it has the mentor. I think you need to Samuel watch it Jackson. a second time. That's what I think needs to happen. I might, but if I can say it does have that Christian quality to it. I've been thinking of a hero about becoming a bigger years. hero? No, no. Well, the idea that I don't want to spoil anything too much about this, but she had the hero was amnesiac to who she really was and her identity. And I think that can relate to sometimes, you know, people like me or other people who sometimes have to remember who we are. We can lose ourselves now, in this world. Are you now saying that you are like Captain Marvel? I am saying I'm trying to... You started out by being like God, and now you're like Captain Marvel. I'm trying to relate this to the Christian life, Mike, where Captain Marvel is an amnesiac, doesn't know her true home, and then slowly, surely finds her way. And it's like us. I think sometimes, as Christians, I know I can speak for myself, where I have those moments where I can get lost in the materialism and the wealth and the status updates, and... I lose my identity as a child of Christ. Okay. For anyone listening to this podcast right now, who's listening to Pete's review, everything he described does none of it is in the movie. So I have no idea. I meant the identity, Mike. I'm that's what I'm talking about. She finds out who she really is at the end of the movie. I'm being serious. I I believe you. 
and she. I also don't want to spoil anything, so I'm no, not gonna I don't want to spoil left. anything either. You, so that's a roundabout way of saying that thinking on reflecting more about this movie since our conversation. It's now you know, an hour ago. It's you now considered a Christian allegory. I, maybe a couple of days ago, but I fleshed it out more in the last hour because I did want to bring it up. Okay, well then I will give a simpler <laughs> review. It is the one of the five best Marvel movies ever made. Um, it is has excellent cinematography. Brie Larson was phenomenal as Captain Marvel. She had just the right amount of attitude and and um, and the acting was outstanding. All of, it, it sort of walked that line between a buddy movie between her and Sam Jackson, but then also this awesome movie about about this incredible person who uh, there is there is a growth across the the movie but ha, um, see i said too and you were making when i was talking about growth you were like no there isn't blah, 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 blah. no we all grow i didn't say it, it's not a christian allegory it doesn't, there's no christian allegory to it in any that way shape before or form before i said anyway continue about your your review your star review it is but i've seen it twice i saw it by myself on opening night and then i saw it with my family on the following saturday and it was outstanding and it's one of the few times we've gone to a marvel movie where everyone was in total agreement about how great it was and for all the same reasons so um you're not welcome to a family meal apparently because you said n- not stellar things about captain marvel so i, I just I, I i did like i don't know it. why like, you hate her and uh brie larson but whatever That's i'm okay. ho- yes well i i'm i'm friendly to australians because i love ben mendelson in this movie wow so you a, a, a fantastic movie about uh about female power and you fixate on the dude nice job Pete. well i real nice how unwoke <laughs> Get along with get get on with the news things. I think you've talked yourself into a, a ditch already. <laughs> well, Brie Larson, I do love you. I think you were. I, I honestly do think she was very good in the role, and I'm excited to see her in the next one. Because um, uh, in if you looked at yeah, if you looked at the trailer, she is in the next one. Yes. So I'm very very happy. No, I think she'll fit in. I think it's exciting for her to be like she's going to lead the next phase of movies and I'm excited to see that I think the character will only grow and you know develop it is exciting it's uh oh all the characters get better over time I agree yeah so I mean I I was I'm not a Captain Marvel hater Mike don't paint me don't paint me with that brush you painted you with that brush I didn't paint you with the brush I put yeah just yeah you're not Bob Ross over there I wish I had his fro Go. Start with the news. <laughs> well, well moving is. on, we got the iRace for Vocations coming up in a few weeks. That's exciting. March 31st from 12 to 5 at Washington Lake Park in Sewell. Of course, uh, we've talked about the iRace for Vocations over the last couple of weeks. And even um, if you're an old, if you're a passionate listener of the show, I apologize, um, You've listened to uh, us talk to Father Romano, the director of vocations, about it because it's a mass to pray for and promote vocations for the Diocese of Camden. Bishop Sullivan will be celebrating mass. There'll be a 5K run, one mile walk. It'll just be a great time. Uh, And and once again, Mike, I'm going to say that you'll be dancing. There'll be dancing. There will be dancing. That is true. Yes, I'm very excited for that. There'll be music. There's a picnic, a good family atmosphere. So bring everybody. Pray to the Blessed Mother for fantastic weather. That day, March 31st, 12 to 5 in Washington Lake Park in Sewell, New Jersey. Come on out. Michael and I will be there. Mm -hmm. And a week later, Sunday, April 7th, Mike, we got the 6th Annual Diocese of Camden Faithful Food Drive. There are a lot of individuals, unfortunately, here in South Jersey who uh, are food insecure. They do not know where their next meal is going to come from. Uh, so what we're doing, we're doing our part as good Catholics to help out, you know, uh, donate food. You can drop them off at any Catholic church in the diocese on April 7th. You can drop off canned tuna fish, canned chicken, canned soup, canned chili, canned veggies, vegetable soup, applesauce, fruit juice, and you can do that on that day, Sunday, April 7th. It'll be an awesome, uh, awesome day to just help and, um, and be thankful for what we have. And in that abundance, uh, pass it on, pass it on. As the Lord has given to us, let us do to our neighbors. 
April 7th, or you can participate on the virtual food drive at camdendiocese.org slash faithful, F-U-L-L. And Mike, this is cool. Sunday, and to our listeners, Sunday, April 28th. Uh, this is really neat. I um, will be attending this 20th annual afternoon of Jazz Plus, sponsored by Diocese of Camden's Black Catholic Ministries and Cultural Diversity to benefit the Black Catholic Ministry Scholarship Fund. There'll be fun fellowship, a buffet dinner, and dancing to the renowned sounds of the Max. I love dancing, so you, you'll see me there. I might, I might put on my dancing shoes, Mike. Hope uh, to see you there, too. And this is going to be at Leto Caters, 1849 Cooper Street in Almanessa, New Jersey. From 2 to 7 p.m., it's $50 per person. Sunday, April 28th. For more info, contact Joe and DeGennaro at 856-583-2904. And this is a really cool event. We have not talked about this before. This is new for this year. The Diocese of Camden's first ever soccer cup. This is going to be a day of family fun and happy, healthy, and holy competition. There will be a tournament. The age range is between 18 to 30 years old. There will be all boys teams and all girls teams. Music, prayer, food for all the participants and their families. This will be held on Saturday, June 15th at St. Augustine Prep School, 611 Cedar Avenue in Richland, New Jersey, 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Free admission. So come on out for a beautiful day. Uh, Show off your soccer skills, um, boys and girls, between 18 and 30, and bring your family, you know, cheer cheer, uh, cheer each other on. Uh, for more info, contact uh, Jose Rodriguez at 856-583-6172. And this is uh, sponsored by the Youth and Young Adult uh, Office, the Campus Ministries offices, and the Diocese of Camden's Office of Hispanic Ministry. And as always, these and more announcements can be found on camdendiocese.org. Yeah, I'm really excited about that last one. The, uh, that's the first time we've done anything like that in the diocese. And uh, we really, I, lo- I love the idea of having a soccer tournament uh, in that regard. I, I really think that'll be a yeah. fun event. Uh, yeah. hope they, I hope they have good weather for it. Cause, uh, and I definitely, I will be there with camera in hand. I love taking the sports photographs. So uh, Sounds. I will not miss it unless, of course, I absolutely miss it since... I miss so many things that I want to go to. Yeah, there. Uh, I mean, I just I've gotten more into soccer. NBC Sports plays uh, the um, all the games, the Premier League. I think every Saturday. Mm-hmm. So I've been watching some of that. The Real Madrid's, the uh, the Crystal or Manchester United. I think Crystal City. Mm-hmm. I think that's right. And then also, I went to a Union game, Philadelphia Union game, a few years ago at the Link. Incredible. Mm-hmm. I saw Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo, probably the best player on the planet, play. And uh, they it was a friendly game, they call it, which kind of it wasn't really a uh, – it wasn't a, a, a match for competition. It was just kind of – they played each other, and, and yeah, Real Madrid beat Philadelphia Union. Mm-hmm. But it was cool. fun. So this June 15th at San Augustine Prep. So, Mike, who do we have uh, – on the program today. Someone who I know has actually listened to the podcast, which is, is kind of scary, actually, when, when we find out people actually listen to this thing. I just assume it's me and you in a closed room and nobody pays attention. But um, we have with us today the new head of uh, uh, Director of Development for the Diocese, Marianne Gilbride. Thank you very much for, for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. No, this is great. Uh, we we'd certainly had uh, your predecessor, Jim Lanahan, on several times, and uh, he was always, you know, a, a great chatterbox, which uh, which we love on the podcast, and uh, so we're hoping you'll be just as uh, loquacious. The, um, so you no pressure. Uh, no, no <laughs> pressure. But this is not your first time around in the diocese. This is actually your second time in the diocese, isn't it? Right. I um, started at the turn of the century. <laughs> so, far, the year, so long ago. In the year 2000, I was brought on board from the um, computer services world. I was uh, working with Monsignor Marucci with the Ublati Deo Corral and Orchestra. I, I sang with that and was mentioning oh. that I was going to have to stop um, traveling uh, because my husband was going to start traveling again and one of us needed to be home with the kids and he was like 
I was just invited to start a development office and I need somebody to do the data piece for me. So we need to get you on board. So um, it, it took a little negotiating because of, you know, when you leave the corporate world and you mm -hmm. work for the church, you, you're making a sacrifice for yep. um, your salary. Mm -hmm. And so we actually refinanced our house so we could afford wow. for me to be able to, to work here. That is commitment right there. Yeah, but it was it was something that I just really felt drawn to. And Monsignor said, don't you worry about the philanthropy side. He said, I'll teach you about the fundraising stuff. You just bring your expertise in computer services and um, we'll do this together. Yeah. So, um, so it, it really worked out. And you were here the first time around, you are here for how long? 13 years. 13 years, okay. Yeah. And then uh, you left us to head up to Trenton for a bit, right? I did. There was, um, you, you know, in, in smaller organizations, um, and not that we're small in the diocese, but, you know, at the time we had less than 10 employees in the department. Um, there's only so far you can go. And if your boss isn't leaving, then, you know, you don't really have an opportunity to grow your career necessarily. So there was an opportunity in Trenton, which is, you know, right next door, mm -hmm. really 45 minute to an hour <laughs> drive, but um, almost next door. Yeah. And they were doing a, uh, a capital campaign up there and uh, needed help with um, major gifts and planned giving. And um, it, it worked out. It, it was a nice fit. And um, um, I was up there for like more than five years. Mm -hmm. um, so it was um, interesting, you know, seeing another development office um, come together and um, do their thing. Our um, campaign up there was Faith to Move Mountains. Mm -hmm. um, here yeah. we have Catholic Strong. So um, it, it just, it was nice. And then when Jim retired, um, um, I was asked to have a conversation you know about uh, next steps, and mm -hmm. uh, so um, here, you here I am. There you go. Wonderful. The um, well, I, I tell you, you know, it's it's funny, and uh, I I'm in my career. I've if you look at my um, LinkedIn page, it's like worked here for three years, worked here for three years, worked here. I I bounce around because that's the in my business PR. That's the nature of the business. You end up bouncing around a lot. Um, but I always I also think that the benefit of that is you pick up a lot of other best practices yeah. and you're so all those other seven jobs I worked before I got here or 10 maybe um, before I got here you know they've all impacted this job I, I had a situation recently where we had to do some some last-minute staffing and I because of where I'd been before I was able to find a Cracker Jack person to come in temporarily and, and help us out on a project and uh, I mean thank goodness I moved around yeah. and and I think that's great and, and you know you know particularly when you are you know a little more mature and seasoned in your professionalism like myself and yourself um you know you just come into it with so many more bullets in your in the in the gun not yeah. to use a violent you know reference sure. but um it just gives you a lot better opportunity to come at things and uh that's one of the things that's been nice sitting in meetings with you actually is uh i it's you can see where you have some perspective that maybe we hadn't heard in a while, and that, that ends up being very beneficial to a, to a company, particularly one where you also have the benefit of knowing who all the players were before you left. Yeah, that's that's been huge in the transition so far um, with um, a couple different openings within the department needing to, to fill those and and. Uh, facing those challenges in addition to learning the new role. It's been a godsend to have had the House of Charity Bishop's Annual Appeal under my belt um, to, to really know how that works. Yeah. Um, so I'm just really having to get reacclimated to, to that as as well as um, pulling in the other pieces that I didn't have to be responsible for before. And you uh, you actually came in, what, about uh, a month before we kicked off? Uh, not even not even a month, right? Well, yeah, House of Charity had already done the, um, the parish kickoff mm -hmm. meetings. Um, I started um, January 30th right. of this year, which is funny, too, because the first time I came on board, I started January 31st really? of the yeah. year 2000. So it's... So it's it's only around the beginning of the year that we need to worry about where you are. Okay, <laughs> that's good to know. The uh, now, you know, and so so that has been a joy. So I'm I'm curious, you know, as someone who sort of came from corporate and and then sort of entered into development, you know, I, I've done a lot of development work in my past, and of all the work I've done, I 
think that might have been the most challenging for me, um, simply because I really do think the people who can do can do development, who can do fundraising, are a special animal. I mean, I, I know what my qualities are, and they're not necessarily in the in the fundraising world. I, I know how to do it. You know, from a, a logistics standpoint, like I know what you need to have set up, but actually walking into the room and making an ask can be, you know, difficult. Sure. So how do you, I mean, I'm curious, how did you sort of come to the, understand it? Was, it? Um, it was just a matter of realizing that everybody has gifts, um, financial, intellectual, um, technical um, they're all gifts and we're all born with very different ones of those mm -hmm. and god asks us all regardless of what those gifts are to share them that's why we were given them because god didn't give us all the same gifts we all have different gifts but he said i'm giving them to you to share yeah. so so money is just another one of those gifts and people sometimes say like oh how can you ask people for money that's so hard but i I say, but if if you were in church and you heard the person behind you singing, you might not think twice about saying, wow, like you really have a good voice. You should join the choir. You should join the mu music ministry, yeah. like without even thinking. And, and the idea that people have financial gifts, it's just money is such a, a scary topic for, for people to talk about. Yeah. Uh, but, but it's really just another one of those gifts. And, and people who have more significant dollars in their own arsenal are people who also have other human issues. Mm. Uh, and so those people need to be ministered to as well. And it, it can be difficult for them when people approach them who they've never even met before or heard of before um, to sit down and ask them for a gift. But if you've cultivated a relationship with them because they're in your parish or they're in your neighborhood or they're in another um, group that you belong to, choir or whatever, um, it's the relationship first. You build the relationship first. You, you um, build that understanding then of what the need is that maybe that person has the ability to help with and oftentimes they'll say well how can I help you you mm. know when you talk about the the need that's out there um, so the the asking um, once the relationship is there already is so much easier yeah. you know yeah. And and there were people like with, with Catholic Strong who um, maybe had concerns because of other things that were going on in their own parish or diocesan-wide that um, maybe at first were kind of venting a little bit. I don't like how this happens and why are we doing this in our parish? And But it didn't mean that they didn't want to participate, but they just needed an opportunity to vent and to talk about some of those things. And and you, as the solicitor, have the opportunity to allow them to open up and share those things that they're concerned with and maybe even put them in touch with someone who can help them to get a better understanding of why it is we're doing this or, you know, hearing, yeah, that's right, we, we need to do something better. Can you join our committee? You know, which happens a lot. As soon as you bring up the problem, it's like, oh, you're going to be the chairperson yeah. of our next committee. Um, but um, but thinking of it along those lines as as gifts and talents and and needing to give back, really for me has made it easier. Yeah. Um, I, I agree. It's it's something that I actively avoided for the first twenty years of my adult life, probably, um, or life in general, probably, and then. I actually did a little bit of development for the first nonprofit that I worked for, Volunteers of America at Delaware Valley. And fortunately, I, I had a boss who was a, I mean, consummate professional. He was one of the best um, uh, fundraising people I've ever met in my life. And suddenly, after talking to him, it all became a lot easier. And now I, I do still try and avoid it as best I can. But now I avoid it because I'm actually halfway good at it. And if if I agree to do it too often, I'm going to turn into a professional fundraiser. You'll be in charge. And it's not necessarily the thing that gets me out of bed in the morning. Um, but 
but you know, like I, so you know, I go to an event that's a, a fundraising event, and it's kind of nice being on the inside, having been on the inside, and going, okay, I know why they're doing this. I know what the the here's that. I mean, they're man, they're really in a lot of ways. In addition to the person to person, there is a science to to fundraising. Whether you're talking about data and all the databases we use, and and all the and the different. Uh, um, pieces of technology we use to, to, to call for for good fundraising prospects or just you know how you put together a fundraising piece you know whether it's a marketing piece or it's a return piece or, or things like that I mean a great deal of thought and expertise goes into it and you know people who uh, don't respect the process yeah. of fundraising tend to be the people who don't succeed as much as you'd like them to sure. when it comes to when it comes to fundraising so uh you know I, we have a we have a phrase in in the diocese that we use with some re- regularity follow the plan if <sighs> absolutely a, if a if a fundraising professional has come to you and laid something out for you there's an out there's a more than good chance that this is a tried and tested uh technique yeah, and, and we've used that a lot with the annual appeal, even even with Catholic Strong. And when I was in Trenton, it was the same thing. Really, trust us, this works, and yeah. this is why it works. Um, it's it's faith, you know. It's like that's um, right, you know, um, jumping all in and just trusting that the plan has been put together in such a way to make. Um, each group successful um, sometimes is hard I mean it's it's but making the connection between faith in God which sometimes is like jumping off and you know okay God I'm going to trust you in this and trusting the plan that others with experience along these lines have put together um, you know it's it's not always easy no I, oh, go ahead Pete and uh, so with, with your work you're talking about you I imagine you travel a lot. Is that the case going around to? Well, um, for the most part, when you work for a diocese, mostly your travel is just from parish to parish. Um, wherever possible, we try to um, group parish meetings together. But but often, and, and you know, when, when an issue comes up, um, I would rather have a face-to-face with that person yeah. so, you know, we can see each other's um, reactions and commitment and passion and and reasoning for why we are where we are um, and and it's uh, again always that relationship piece of it so I love going down to meet with the pastors um, these guys are great and I'll often do a um, I'll, I'll do a meeting like after morning mass it is such an enlightening piece of the relationship when you've seen that pastor worship. Mm-hmm. Um, some of these guys are just so great at, at what they do in, in that piece of it. it. It really helps you if you're having an issue with a particular, and why is he being so stubborn? And, and then you go and you, you celebrate mass with them and you realize he's in this for a reason. And we can certainly work this out because we're both in it for the same reason, to, yeah. for the greater honor and glory of God and, and to build the church. And yeah. so that's helped me a lot. Um, and, you know, sometimes I think people have a hard time sort of marrying those two ideas, the the spiritual nature yeah. of the church, but that there's a fundraising element to it that isn't, I mean, it, it's not, it's not predatory. It's, right. it's, it's, we do this only because we know that there are other things that we want to do and that by having, you know, financial well being, we're able to do more and reach more and help more mm-hmm. and, you know, make something more beautiful or more user friendly or open to more people, whether that's, you know, a capital improvement like installing ramps or an elevator system in your right. in your church so that people with, you know, or physically challenged can can move around or, you know, hiring someone who, you know, is a youth minister who can really who really knows how to rally young people to the faith. You know, none of those things happen for free and and most of them are beyond the ability of your standard weekly collection. They are right. one-offs that need to be need helped. And and the the you know you look at things that entities that die on the vine. It tends to be the ones that that aren't doing a little extra more, doing a little extra, going a little further, trying something new. Uh, the ones who have a great 
who are who are great at dying young are the ones who oh, this is the way we do it this is the way we've always done it we don't we don't need to do it anymore and no. how's that working for you exactly <laughs> that's those are the ones that usually you know die off unfortunately well much like you know what we did with the podcast right pete you know this is something that's never been thought of before before we got here and then uh you know for the last several years it's been something and now we're getting to the point where I actually he hear people mention the podcast to us like oh yeah you guys are the podcasters or oh yeah, yeah. I heard this one person on the the podcast or oh my god is Bobby uh, the most f- the funniest who, Bobby, Bobby Bradley, Bradley the most uh, funniest person we've ever heard in our lives and yes she is, oh, she um, is. I Friday. actually interviewed her oh, yeah. um, which was great because I already knew who she was and and the great work that she was doing with the senior ministry at St Pete's when I was going through my masters. Um, uh, with um, St. Joseph College of Maine. It mm-hmm. was like an all online thing that was through here, through the lifelong faith formation thing. And um, it was a, a pastoral ministry course I was taking on um, uh, pastoral ministry to the aging, sick, and dying. Mm-hmm. And so I interviewed her and like, what an amazing woman and what a great ministry she has. And the people are, are just phenomenal. I mean, they're... Uh, if you haven't listened to that podcast yes, uh, yet, dear listeners, go back and listen to it. It is the funniest podcast I think we've ever done. Yeah. They are hysterical and they are so lively and Bobby is unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, I... You know, we don't usually cross talk about a previous podcasts, but that's one you want to go back and, and listen to. We had a great, and, I mean, they're going to, uh, Pete, you, I mean, that's your parish, right? Yeah. Do you get accosted by the yeah. members of that ministry with any regularity? Uh, not yet. He's uh, too uh, young. I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I've seen Bobby and I've seen a few others who really had, uh, they, they loved it. They listened to it and they, they just were. We're, uh, we're very happy. And that's another ministry that's helped by, you know, fundraising yeah. that, that are done by th- both the parish and fundraising that we do through Vitality Catholic Healthcare Services, as well as the House of Charity Catholic uh, Bishop Daniel Sam- Appeal. Still a mouthful of a... Uh, <laughs> now, you were here when that first started, right? House of Charity House. Bishop Daniel Appeal. Yeah. Um, yes, it was, it was originally just the House of Charity. Yeah. And then when Bishop DiMarzio came on board, he was hearing from the pastors, you know, we have all these collections every Sunday. It's an additional collection. So he said, okay, fine. Let's take all those other ministries that we do these second collections for and combine them into the House of Charity. So we'll call it House of Charity Bishop's Annual Appeal. We'll increase the goal. And some of the poor pastors at the time, their goals were like triple and they were... <gasps> you know really really struggling but again it was like but follow the plan it mm-hmm. really works yeah. and and they were amazed the first time they got that five thousand dollar ask prior to that was like, what do you mean five thousand dollars how do i ask somebody for five thousand dollars and yet there were people out there who were ready willing and able to yeah. make gifts of that level and the society of stewards were born and um they've been just troopers in in being there in in a very strong financial way to help make sure that those ministries continue to be funded so yeah. we've still got saint john of god and and uh, catholic charities that were the two core areas that were funded through the house of charity but then um the the other ministries um just now receive that yearly funding yeah. the money comes in and goes out you know it really makes a big difference um and I, you know, going back to the asking for uh, for what you might think is a big number, and they go, no, no one would ever possible. You you would seriously be shocked. I I mean, I personally was shocked when we did, my wife and I decided on how much we were going to donate to Catholic Strong. I was like, I had a number in my head, and then my wife blew that number out of the water, and I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess <laughs> we're those people now. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll make it a big big donation. But it's true, and, you know, to look at us, I mean, we're just your typical run-of-the-mill middle-aged family, uh, middle-income middle-aged family. And, um, and but, you know, if the, if the, if I was going to say the argument is valid, but if the if the need is valid and and you know it's honest and you really and think God so. will not be outdone in generosity, exactly. it really does come back to you. Oh man, Father Sinatra just showed up. <laughs> he says that all the time. <laughs> does he? <laughs> yeah, that, all the time. Yeah, but, and it it but it worked for me too. Like as um, early in in my married life, um, we gave to the church, but not a whole lot how was it possible when i was then on my own 
with my kids to be able to afford to put more into the collection basket. How, like, how yeah. does that happen? But it did. Yeah. And I wasn't, um, you know, tightened that significantly. Uh, I was, how was I able to give more? Because God recognizes the sacrifice and, and he makes sure that you have what you need. And, yeah. and I just was able to keep following that. I got an increase in my salary, got an increase in my donation and just tried to, to keep that up. And, um, it just happens. It's true. You know, I, my wife coming in, we've been married almost 20 years now. And Congratulations. thank you very much. When we came into the marriage, you know, I, I had always been a what's ever in my pocket kind of donor. Right. And she was like, no, no, we're doing 10%. I was like, <laughs> we were newly married. And I said, <laughs> 10%. Wait, I'm terrible at math, but isn't that this much? And she goes, yeah. She goes, and you're comfortable with that? She's like, yeah, we just won't you know, take a vacation or something like that. I went, oh, okay. Um, but the truth of the matter is, that's it, it went, once I sort of changed my mindset about that, I've never looked back. Mm -hmm. I, I Actually, I, I have a cousin who, who is the most frugal human being on the place of the earth. It, Frugal's not fair. He's cheap. And um, <laughs> he, uh, like, I will tell him, I don't, I mean, we don't speak about our, our, do, our donating habits generally, but I do tell him because mostly I want to see the look on his face when I tell him how much we donate, but also because I, I want him to r remind him that he and I are exactly the same in every way. And yet, and I don't care what he donates to. And yet I am, I am capable of doing it. Therefore, he is capable of doing it. Um, and I, I hope that he would. He doesn't have to give to the church, but I hope he gives to something somewhere to a uh, you know a substantial degree. And and uh, I don't know if he has, but I'm hoping he has. Um, he certainly donated his time and he's donated his talent. We might still be working on treasure a little bit, but it's it's it is it is important, you know. And it's and in you know when I first got here, uh, within about four months, we started putting the. House of Charity, you know, it's the, the tally sheet that usually goes into the paper right. a few months after the, the campaign starts. And, um, you know, sometimes people look at it and it's like, and there's a competitiveness to it. It's like, you know, you're, you don't want to be the one at the bottom end of the, of the thing. You're like, and it's like, oh, I don't want parish that far down. And, and, I, and I know that the pastors sort of look at it with each other. Like, well, how's, how's Father Tim doing versus how's Father Ed doing? And, and uh, I think I think a little healthy competitiveness to fundraising yeah. is good as well. Yeah. <laughs> and parishes also the the parishioners look at that. You know, how we doing, Father? Oh, I mm -hmm. see we jumped up. Oh, and sometimes it's healthy between the neighboring parishes that are close to each other. Uh, but it it's it's also there's an excitement to it as well. Like as we grow, what we as a diocese contribute towards the betterment of other people within our diocese it's ministry it's it's spiritual and it's um healthy ministry to to be able to to give back and help your fellow man and woman <laughs> and and children. Well, if we can go back for a bit so you where did you grow up are you from the i Saturday? grew up in runnymede i right. am okay. a product of the Diocese of Canton, St. Teresa's Grammar School, St. Joe's <laughs> High School. Um, I, I went, uh, graduated through the lifelong faith formation with my undergrad at St. John Newman, and um, then got my master's um, through the program again, uh, pastoral theology in, um, in Maine. Mm. Uh, the commute was a bit tough, uh, but no, it was online. <laughs> it was 100% online, and um, the first time I set foot on campus was for graduation. But... Um, the um <laughs> the the whole piece of it was just so relevant during my um, fundraising period too because it just i saw how it all tied in mm -hmm. like the the giving back of of the saints and and how fundraising is so scriptural and you know it was it it helped with developing themes for um the the house of charity each year and um it it just it was it fit mm -hmm. is your theme for this year um uh you did it for me you did it for me um okay. whatsoever you did for the least of my brothers and sisters you did it oh, for me okay. there's a scriptural yeah, that's the, aspect mm -hmm. to it yeah yeah so, that's so that's we try to do that every year to just tie it in scripturally um 
is it, has the video come out yet? Oh yeah, uh, the the video's all out. Everything got distributed to the parishes. Um, many of the parishes have done their in pew solicitation, but some have not, because okay. of the the co um, campaigns. Um, Catholic Strong and House of Charity. Um, some of the parishes had a different time frame for their House of Charity because they might have still been working on Catholic Strong. Okay. Yeah, I don't think my parish has shown the video yet. You're giving me a weird look, Mike. Oh, yeah. Well, that's because I forgot about that. But, I mean, it is on It is on YouTube. It is on the... Oh, good. Right. We right. have... But that's true. This is a... This last year and this year were sort of unique situations as right. we were running them side by side. But, you know, I'll go back to what we... You were talking last year, and and we, I felt like we kind of put this argument to bed a little bit last year. Um, but people were saying, "Well, how can I donate to the House of Charity and donate to Catholic Strong?" And we we're like, "Well, you have to sort of look at them differently. You have a weekly offering, and then the House of Charity is an annual offering, and then the Catholic Strong is a you know once every." 10 years, in our case, almost 30 years, right. sacrificial offering. And, and the truth of the matter is it's intended to hurt a little bit. It's, this, is a, this is an unusual request that we're not, well, unfor it shouldn't be unusual. It should happen about every 10 years, but it hadn't happened for, I think, 28 in the diocese um, where you do this diocesan-wide campaign. The difference is, and Mary Ann certainly knows this, usually in a diocesan-wide campaign, it's the diocese. It's taking the the bulk of the money oh, yeah. but in this case the parishes are keeping an unheard and no as far as i've asked around it's never happened before catholic strong having 70 percent of the funds raised remain in the parish and only 30 percent going to the diocese uh, that's unheard it's of. almost unheard of yeah. it, it really is and um because um being in development for so many years um we attend the international catholic stewardship conference and so dioceses get to to meet and greet and talk um, with other parishes or other dioceses in, in how they're doing things. You know, what works for you. We found Midwest things don't necessarily work the same on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. um, but it's... Um, um, well, yeah, and even within Catholic Strong ourselves, we found that the how we handled the shore area because of the nature yeah. of the shore had to be a little bit different because we simply... We, it's and it's not like that in any other diocese. We our shore communities are unique, unique to us. Yes. Um, and sort of figuring out how to work within those communities took time. Now, fortunately, because of the House of Charity, we we had sort of an idea in mind, but there were elements to Catholic Strong that had been used in other dioceses that they didn't even have to consider that. Right. You know that 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 you know the shore. I mean, let's face it, the shores are uh, very peaceful and quiet. Uh, from say. October, uh, October to March, yeah. right? Um, but we become bustling in the summertime. So that's really when you need to do fundraising programs in the summertime. So we had to sort of alter and things. summer visitors really have been quite generous. Mm -hmm. they, they see these um, summer parishes that they attend as their summer parish home. And so many of them give not only to their own annual appeal at home where they live, but they'll also make a gift um, through the um, the parish uh, that they attend in the summer. Yep. So um, sometimes priests were hesitant in the beginning to, to ask them. It's like, well, if if you don't ask, the answer for sure is no. Mm -hmm. But at least if you ask, you have the opportunity for a yes. And many people have responded in in quite a positive way. Yeah. So and once you ask two three times, you get kind of comfortable with it. It's yeah. not. It really isn't scary after a while. And, and the truth is, if the answer is no and the people share with you why that answer is no, you've still built something between the two of you. You've had a conversation. Mm -hmm. You know now why this person is, is having a particular issue. You can continue to work to, to build that uh, repair if there needs to be some. But, but you both now have had that conversation, and it, it hasn't broken you. Yes. You know, so um, there's there's still the door is still there for a pot. And, and it's happened. People who've had an issue at one time wrote a letter and, you know, I'm, I'm not going to give this year. But when you communicate back with them and say, we certainly understand and, you know, please continue to pray for the campaign, the appeal, whatever. Um, let us know if there's anything we can do down the road. Um you can look back and often they've returned yeah so just sometimes they just want to be heard yeah 
Now, Pete, after listening to, to Marianne, so, um, are you inspired to join the next House of Charity volunteer team to be part of the fundraising team? Um, I can do that. Okay. I've never even heard of that. When, A new what recruit. Is, what, is that, uh, what does that entail? Well, when you um, belong to a parish, you can be invited to participate on the House of Charity um, team, uh, the, the committee to, to help with the fundraising at your particular parish. So okay. um, you might be asked to help with counting the cards. You might be asked to help with soliciting. You might be asked to help with uh, putting together maybe a little reception to invite a group of people to, to talk about the appeal. You might be um, invited to count up the gifts at the end. Um, there's lots of different pieces that go into the whole process. Hmm. So I should talk to my pastor? Sure. Not, okay. I think I'll Father Tim would love to hear from you. And particularly, I, I know you love throwing a, a, a gathering, so uh, it might be a great opportunity. You love parties. Yeah, it's wonderful. I, 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 th- I think that would be fun. I, th- I, I love my parish, St. Pete's, yeah. and I... Um, that might be an opportunity. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for uh, good idea. Well, I know. I know when I, I know when I see a. Uh, and um, your parishes. <laughs> <laughs> Working for the diocese, they're all my parishes. Right. I, I support all of them equally. We uh, we see that you're using your gifts and talents wisely. That's right. I'm exactly. <laughs> yes. The um, well, I think we're gonna we're gonna. Uh, wrap up but uh you know pete usually likes to ask you know questions about you know books you've read or good advice you've gotten I, i'm don't curious. spoil anything Mike. No, i'm not spoiling yeah. anything i'm i'm curious you know because um of the nature of your job and and your career prior are there any readings books um saints phrases that you use in your ministry as a fundraiser um recently it's it's been i can do all things through god who strengthens me mm. um you know starting the the new job Philipp, philippians um is it three six it's not oh gosh no. um i know it has like a maybe four thirteen okay. chapter four verse thirteen because it's almost my birthday four fourteen oh. yeah <laughs> um way to remember but um no i um um there's there's just so many the spirituality of fundraising by by Henry Nowen yeah. is is one of the big things that really helped to click for me that that this truly is ministry. Yeah. Um, um, what else? I know if if people have a hard time believing it when I say you know fundraising is a ministry, but it's it's honestly true. If if done correctly, it is absolutely a ministry. It can just be a career and a way to cash a paycheck, sure. but when you really believe in it and and you really believe in the cause you're asking right. to support financially, it is it is not difficult this to do. This is the church that Christ built and yeah. I I want to help that continue. Um um, we every every generation from from the time that Jesus walked the earth has had its challenges and and um, I I want to be one of those that Jesus said oh but you hung in there for me and I'm so glad you did and you know so. <laughs> I love that all right well thank you everybody for listening and uh, Pete thank you for for getting Marion up here Marion thanks for coming up three thank floors you. or two floors to Yay. to hang out with us and um, we'll talk to you all later thanks for listening thanks.